What's up guys, it's your creative friends, and in this video, we will be taking a look at the Mars Curiosity Rover right now. How you doing guys? I am here with Steven Pakbaz. Hi. And Steven actually designed the Mars Curiosity Rover. Yes, I designed the Lego set, and I also helped work on the actual Curiosity Rover currently on Mars. That is pretty amazing. Yeah, we actually just had some dinner and he had some fascinating stories about his work designing the real deal. Um, and today is January 1st, so Happy New Year, and it's the first day that you can actually buy this set. Uh, yes, it went on sale at midnight, although from what I've seen online, it looks like it sold out just under seven hours after it was released. Although I think there are supposed to be more expected sometime later in January. I would hope so, and from what we understand, they're not even available yet at your LEGO store, but hopefully in the coming weeks, you'll be able to find them at your LEGO store too. What were your thoughts when you were notified that your set reached 10,000 votes on Kuso, and it was actually going to be turned into a real LEGO set? Uh, I felt pretty great, actually, of course. And uh, this happened shortly after the real Curiosity rover landed on Mars, so I was already feeling pretty good about the real rover successfully landing, and then my rover set achieved 10,000 supporters, and, you know, it just sort of kept the feeling going. LEGO actually sent you one a little bit ahead of time, and that's why we're going to be able to take a look at it now and totally review it in detail for you. And in addition, we'll also compare it to Steven's original design. So we've got both of them back there, and why don't we take a look right now. So let's zoom in. All right, guys, well, here we go. You can see we've got two rovers in front of us. This is the actual set that you'll be able to purchase, and then this is Steven's original design. Uh, we do have Steven here who will be able to provide some commentary as we go through this. Also, we are in Steven's studio here in Virginia. Um, it was kind of cool that we are able to hang out today. I don't think I've heard it called a studio before. I just refer to it as my Lego room. All right, your Lego room. <laughs> no, studio's fine too. All right. Um, well, maybe we'll give you a quick overview at the end of this video. Sure. Just kinda, yeah, maybe a sneak peek at maybe the next Kuso set he's going to submit. It no. could be any one of these It models. could be any one of them. So this is the guide or the book that you get along with the rover, um, which does go on like all of these Kuso sets and a lot of architecture sets to give you some history of the project, the, you know, the instructions that are on the black, and then at the end, we do get some information about Steven, a word from the model creator, and tell us, tell me what you told me about these pins that you're wearing around your neck here. Uh, this image was from when I was working at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and so that's my lanyard that would have my tag I need to get in and out of the, in and, uh, in and out of campus. And it's got a bunch of pins with all sorts of commemorative, uh, well, commemorative pins about different spacecraft that launched or anniversaries, stuff like that. And this is our box. This will be back of the box. And let me say what set it was. 21104, 295 pieces. And you were saying that this is actually the smallest piece count for a Kuso set? Uh, yes, smallest piece count, and I believe the cheapest one so far. So let's go through right off the bat a couple of the differences that we can just see visually. And the first I'm going to start with is the base plate. So on our left is the actual rover model. On the right is Steven's original design. So the base plates are slightly different colors. This is what? This is light tan, dark tan? Well, I just say tan and dark tan. All right. I don't know what the official color names are. Who knows? And then the other thing which was interesting is that these pieces that are used to kind of simulate the rocks, uh, this dark orange color is actually pretty rare. And Steven, you just got it as part of a grab bag, as part of your lug? Yeah, uh, I wanted to make, I didn't have a base plate when I first made the model, and I wanted to make something really quick just to show people how the suspension system worked. And I had a grab bag from a long time ago from the Lego store that had a bunch of those in there. And I didn't know where they came from, I didn't know how rare they were, but they looked, you know, reddish, reddish brown, sort of like the surface of Mars, so I used them to make a little landscape for the rover to go over. Yeah, and I mean, you gotta love the suspension on this. Yeah. Let's just play with yours, since it's the real one. And you can kind of see how 
heavy wheels kind of can move over those rocks real nicely there. Yep, it's basically designed the same as the real rover so that all six wheels stay on the ground at all times for maximum stability and maneuverability. So as we get the real guy in here, so they did change those out for the gray. Yeah, but you know, there are gray rocks on Mars, so there would be a place on Mars that could look like that. So it's still Mars to me. All right. So let's take a look at the front of this guy. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. There we go. And I have no idea what these instruments are called because I don't build ships that then end up on Mars. But you can learn about all the different instruments inside the booklet. Well, that's fantastic. I can't wait to read it. Um, so why don't we start off on the back here? What is this instrument used for? This is the turret on the end of the robotic arm, and basically it has a suite of different and varying instruments and cameras, drills, and all sorts of other stuff to, to do its investigation of Mars. And this is where our camera is? Uh, there are cameras here, plus this uh, red eye here is actually a laser that's used to vaporize the top surface of rocks, and when the rocks give off a spark of light, it analyzes the spectrum of that light to tell what the rocks are made of. That's pretty awesome. It is. And would these just be some types of... That's uh, one of the antennas. So this is the high gain antenna on the rover. You have the low gain antenna and you have the UHF antenna, which stands for ultra high frequency. Which is the antenna that sends the signals to us back here at Earth? I think the one used most often is the high gain antenna. I th think. The other ones are used too, but I'm not too familiar with how often and what part do we have here? This is uh, another one of my favorite uh, little uh, components. It's called a radioisotope thermoelectric generator. Basically, it's the nuclear power source for the rover. And why is it important that the grills are the gold color? Uh, I think that's similar to the uh, chemical coated uh, uh, heat rejection uh, tubes on the rover. Basically, it helps to get rid of extra heat generated by the plutonium oxide uh, pellets inside the radioisotope generator. So tell us a little more about how the suspension works on the rover. So you can see up top, as you move one set of wheels down, the other set of wheels will come up, because um, it looks like they're kind of on a uh, yep. little swivel here. It's called an offset differential arm. That's what I was going to say. The offset differential arm. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds cool, though. Yeah. But basically, uh, uh, Chad's right. As one wheel goes up, the other wheel goes down. And basically, it sort of divides that motion between the chassis. So, as you can see, when one wheel goes up, the rover body only tilts up half as much as the wheel tilts up. So when it's traveling over uneven terrain, the body stays as level as possible, even though the wheels could be all over the place. So if we go and we look at, let's just say we want to compare models again, I know one of the parts that is different is how they built that part. So do you want to tell us a little bit about, oh yeah, I see I knocked off some antennas. That one's not going to be able to communicate with Earth anymore. Easily fixed. Okay. Uh, so we have these Technic parts here that are a little bit different on the original model than on the model that we're going to be going to be getting. Can you talk a little bit about you know that part? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, the suspension itself was one of the parts I was most worried about when Lego did their redesign in order to match with the parts they had available, and stuff like that. I think they actually improved it because you see the pieces they used here, these black steering arm pieces, actually use ball joints to connect. Uh, each end together while I use uh, you know bars and Technic links and things like that. I actually find this to be more accurate to the real rover and it makes it more robust and easier to put together and things like that. Uh, when I actually put this rover together uh, way back in the beginning of 2011, I don't think I even knew these pieces existed. They did at the time, but I think they're only found in three expensive LEGO Technic sets. Mm. So, uh, I mean, if I had known about them, and if I had any in my collection, I'm sure I would have used them too. So I'm very happy with the way the suspension came out. 
And really aside from that, there isn't too much that's different between the original model and, and the kit that we're going to be uh, able to get. Not really. I mean, the, the body of the rover itself is constructed differently than mine, but, you know, there's a thousand and one ways to make a box out of Lego, so there's no issue there. And the only other thing is maybe the, the way the arm is attached. It looks like it's just reinforced a little bit more. Yeah, on you this can model. see I only have one bracket on my arm, so if you play with the arm too much, there's a chance it could come off, but uh, LEGO fixed that by doubling up with it on their version. Yeah. Well, they didn't fix it enough for me to keep knocking parts off. No, that's just some of the hazard cameras on the front of the rover. They did do that a little bit different than mine. They use studs to oh, I connect the it. binoculars, while on the bottom of mine uses clips. But then again, you know, there's more than one way to connect binoculars, so... But overall, um, this... Oh, look what I did here. I completely mangled oh, uh, this you guy. Just flipped the wheel. <laughs> um, overall, this has got to be one of the best Kuso sets that's been released. All right, so I guess we'll take a look around, and, and then we'll wrap this up. So here we are in the studio. See, it's a studio now. And I think you guys have probably seen some of the pictures of Steven in his Lego room where you can see all of the, well, like these are Acromil cases. I know a lot of you guys use stack-ons, but these are actually Acromil cases just with all of his parts in there. Up top is where each Kuso set is. And then there's the DeLorean, and then this is where he keeps his rovers, the original and the Lego set that came out. These are actually awards that have been won by Steven at conventions. One for the rover and one for the steam engine. Uh, there's just a ridiculous amount of cool builds here that Steven has done. And who knows, maybe one of them you'll see up on Kuso again. There's some scaffolding that holds a whole bunch of keychains. Eventually it will be part of the space pack one of these years. So this table here are a lot of space related builds. And we'll start off with Voyager. That's something I made around two years ago. Voyager is my absolute favorite spacecraft. Or at least favorite spacecraft that I did work on. So we have the dish on top. The high What'd you call that arm? The magnetometer boot. Yeah, right. It's a very interesting structure if you see it in person. A lot more intricate than what's shown there. And a lot of these models have been on display at the Smithsonian Air and Space, right? Yep. Uh, every so often they have events called Space Day or Family Day or uh, events on other holidays where they invite uh, Lego people to come and display their space or aircraft related models for thousands of visitors to view and enjoy. Well, you can totally see why they would enjoy these models. Because they are extremely detailed and extremely accurate. It helps when you've worked on some of them. Yeah, I'd say. Or uh, worked near them. And then the one in the back here is Juno. Yes. That is one that's currently on its way to Jupiter, and on board are three Lego minifigures made out of aluminum. In fact, you can see the tiny representations of the figures on that sign there. Oh, that's what's going on there, huh? Yeah, the actual minifigures are hidden inside the body of the spacecraft. So this is a minifigure scale rover. So it's half the size of the Kuso set. And this one, you actually have the laser beam shooting out. Yeah, just for fun. It makes up for it not having an actual working rocker bogey suspension system. And then this is just all kinds of different space guys. Yeah, just guys I have around, just in case. That's my Blacktron 2 army, some Robo 4 skies, astronauts, you know. Who are these guys? Uh, those are Miniland scale figures, which I use 
to place next to some of my models to show off the scale. So example, you've got this uh, 1970s engineer standing next to the Voyager spacecraft so you can get a sense of the size of the real uh, spacecraft. That about wraps it up and really want to thank you for kind of like this impromptu type of video that we had going on. My pleasure. This is quite unexpected. I enjoyed it. I, I could talk about Lego for forever. And we did for a long time before we decided to whip out the camera and take some some video for, for YouTube here. But Steven is an awesome cat. Uh, a really great guy, obviously very talented and a brilliant mind that is really helping not only us enjoy your model out of Lego, but is helping the world explore space and, and the opportunity potentially for life on other planets and that would have just a drastic effect not only on us but in, in the world yeah, as a whole. Well. A lot of people don't think that stuff that's happening in space right now is very exciting for science fiction with lasers and spacecraft and stuff like that, but when you think about it, the Curiosity rover is a 2,000 pound, 7 foot tall, all wheel drive, nuclear powered, laser blasting, interplanetary roaming rover, and I mean, if that doesn't sound like the coolest science fiction vehicle ever, I don't know what is, and yet it's on Mars right now, discovering new things. That basically sums it up, uh, and really I don't think we have to go any further than that. Um, so again, thank you Steven for, for letting us do this, yeah. it was a lot of fun. Um, and hopefully we do it again. There are, oh, you know what some of the cool stuff you have, like those Transformers? Maybe oh. if we ever do come back here, we can go through some like Lego Transformers. You want to tease them with some Lego Transformer action? Uh, well, here's a, an inconspicuous looking little city van vehicle. Yeah, and the whole thing opens up like a Transformer. Yep. It opens up here, maybe that one's already open. Check this out. So this one is also, this is like a Hummer. It folds up into a Hummer. But here it is in a robot mode. Yeah. So these probably will never be Kuso sets, but. They're a little uh, delicate and complex, but I'm always looking for ways to make uh, better, more robust models. But these are really awesome. And I'm telling you, if there was like a, a way to kind of show you how these actually fold up into their vehicles, your mind would be blown. We'll just leave it at that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give a shout out to Steven, and then maybe he'll reply back to you in the comments and stuff like that. That would be a lot of fun. Um, so we'll see you next time on Your Creative Friends. Stay creative.